They came for me in the night. Block, flowers, even Thompson. Flowers carried her wrench. Thompson wore new glasses. Block wore a bandage on his face. They tied me to the chair with my arms back. Why? Thompson gave Flowers access to the security vids. She noticed something. Dread crept up my heart as she spoke. Segments of video were deleted. She couldn't recover them, but she could see where the cuts were made. After Patty walked out the quarantine room, before Capper attacked me, and before the explosion in the cargo hold. That's flimsy evidence to justify a mutiny. But she wasn't done. Someone hacked the comms and thrusters. This required access to the systems console on the bridge. The hacker employed multiple log shields, but she broke them and found the login recorded after the explosion. Victor Trent. The room spun left, right, left, right. The vault's ringing intensified. That's when I knew. It was Flowers. She killed Patty, hid her body, then doctored the vids to frame me. The vault, it was affecting us all. I tried to explain. It's the sound. Couldn't they hear the sound? Flowers and Block looked at me, confused. Thompson looked at the ground. Flowers suggested they slit my throat for killing Patty and Capper. But Thompson stopped that talk real quick. I had not recovered from the fight with Capper. Sitting there, I still felt that pulled muscle against the chair cushion. I didn't know whether I could have taken them all. Thompson stepped between them and me. He was protecting me, I know, but he didn't understand. He commented on the smell, hoping to shift their focus. The look crept back into their eyes. Rage. It was ready to burst. It needed a trigger. I was the trigger. I asked Block why he trusted a woman who nearly took off his head. He touched his bandage and stepped towards me, but not far enough. Thompson held out a hand to block him. I weighed my words. You see, Block wasn't exactly the fastest ship in the fleet. He's had some learning disability since childhood. It's a touchy subject. All I had to do was fire at the right spots. Flowers was the obvious killer. She had access to the ship's systems and security vids. He let the killer beat him? Then fool him? I asked if he was weak and dumb. That did it. He lunged. Thompson kicked his legs on instinct and sent him careening into my lap. I plucked the vibro knife taped under my sleeve and flicked it on. It sliced through the rope. I grabbed his head and buried the blade into his neck. Hot crimson painted my hand as metal tore through flesh. He didn't scream, only gurgled. I charged past Thompson and slammed the knife into Flowers' left eye. Her wrench clanged on the floor, her brain muffled the buzzing. She shrieked. I looked back. Thompson smashed his thumb onto the lock and scrambled out the door, locking me in. We met eyes through the glass. I saw... fear. And something else. Guilt? He turned and ran. I'm alone with the sound and the stink and the bodies. Fucking Thompson, I wasn't after him, just them. They would have killed me. God damn it, I know it wasn't their fault. It was the sound. But I had no choice. I had no choice.